Hi, my name is Shannon Kringen, otherwise known as Goddess Kring. I'm in Seattle, Washington, USA. I got my bubble thingy Mick Jagger. I'm going to blow bubbles. Woo! Yay for bubbles. Okay, there. So that's just something a little bit whimsical and magical. Uh, I'm interested in health and healing. Uh, I admire people who are whistleblowers and trailblazers. Uh, I'm trying not to say anything that would um, be against the rules here where I'm uh, publishing this video. I'm an artist and a model and a free thinker. I'm a fan of free speech. I'm a fan of doing things to um, maintain and or improve my immune system. There are some people who say that your immune system is just a certain way and you're at the mercy of that. Um, that's maybe some conventional medical way of seeing it, like you're a victim of whatever your immune system is. Um, but the trailblazer doctors that I listen to uh, acknowledge that the immune system they're still learning about, uh, when I say they, I mean medical professionals, research scientists and professionals are still learning how the immune system works and we don't fully know from the people that I've listened to we don't fully know um, but we do know that uh, stress and lack of sleep and negative thoughts and anger and fear and being alone and isolated and away from people and not getting any affection we know that that can weaken your body's health and ability to deal with stress and fight against pathogens. Uh, we know that babies in incubators that never get touched or hugged are, are more likely to die than babies who get affection or attention. And in fact, infants that get no contact at all die. I mean, if they're just breastfed, but they don't get any touch, they don't tend to thrive. So just simple things like affection and kindness and love affects the dopamine levels in your brain, which therefore would affect your immune system. And what you eat and medication affects your gut bacteria, which affects your immune system. So when people say what you eat has nothing to do with how healthy your immune system is, that's not exactly true. Your body is like its own ecosystem. And I wanted to mention a list of doctors and medical professionals that I admire just so people because I have a tendency when I talk about medical things I say they and people go well who's they I'm being too vague I do listen to lots of people with credentials I just don't always remember their names so I'm gonna list them off here because lately people have been sort of criticizing me and I think kind of making fun of me or I feel a little bit bullied uh, I was bullied in school, so maybe I'm overly sensitive to this kind of uh, behavior. But then again, I am a left-handed only child person who doesn't really follow the mainstream. I've never really been. My mom put me in alternative school as a kid, and I was raised on Krishnamurti, who is a philosopher from India. So I wasn't really raised in a, a traditional way. I was raised to question authority, and I was raised to use common sense and not just believe what somebody else tells me to check for myself to see if it's true or not. But I do admire Dr. John Bergman, DC, that means doctor of chiropractic, I think. Dr. Jason Fung, MD, who is a kidney specialist from Canada and helps lots of patients. Uh, with diabetes and a kidney disease uh, through intermittent fasting, 16-8, low-carb eating, etc. He usually helps them lessen the, their need for medication and surgery. Uh, it's not a cure-all, fix-all, but it helps. Uh, Dr. Eric Berg, DC, which is doctor of chiropractic, he's really a nutrition person who helps lots of people. Dr. Sarah Hallberg, who did a TED Talk on 
uh, diabetes type 2 and how through nutrition we can radically alter many people that suffer from diabetes type 2 um, through nutrition, mostly eating less carbs and more protein and healthy fats, you can radically change your health. Dr. Ken Berry is an also a low-carb advocate. Uh, Nina Teicholz is a journalist and executive director of the Nutrition Coalition, an independent nonprofit group that promotes evidence-based nutrition policy. Um, I'm also a fan of my own radio show podcast, which I call Goddess Kring, which is, you know, this video right now is something I'm creating. And on Hollow Earth Radio, I have a radio show called Goddess Kring Radio and on Anchor which is a smartphone app that I use and I just randomly record and share everywhere. And I put that on my Goddess Kring radio show also goes on Mixcloud and um, Hello Earth Radio and Patreon. Um, Paul Saladino, MD, he's an expert in nutrition um, and he's kind of a trailblazer and you can listen to lots of videos that he's done. Ivor Cummins, he's a chemical engineer from Ireland that I admire. Gary Tobbs is an investigative science and health journalist and co-founder of the nonprofit Nutrition Science Initiative. Ben Berkman, PhD, is professor of pathophysiology and biomedical science, uh, whose research addenda focuses on the molecular uh, mediators of obesity and its comorbidities. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy is president of Waterkeeper Alliance, as well as founder chairman of the board and Chief Legal Counsel for Children's Health Defense and of Counsel to Morgan & Morgan, a nationwide personal injury practice. Um, in fact, I just listened to a debate about uh, vaccinations with Robert F. Kennedy, and I forgot the name of the other person. And indeed, Robert F. Kennedy is labeled as an anti-vaxxer, um, but he is not. He is not an anti-vaxxer. It is sad to me that if you question the safety of vaccinations, you are labeled anti-vax. I am not anti-vax, and nor is, is Kennedy. Um, he is questioning the safety of some vaccinations and questioning whether or not every single person needs the same dose and the same kind of vaccinations for their health. Different people have different health concerns. The same with vet vets like Dr. Karen Becker. She is a vet for animals. And she advocates for a species-appropriate diet for animals, uh, mostly carnivore for cats, and mostly carnivore for dogs with some carbs in the form of vegetables for dogs. Uh, a lot of um, dogs and cats' health is vastly improved through changing their nutrition, just like humans. And so to question the safety of vaccinations is usually labeled as being anti-vax. But I'm not anti-vaccination. I am pro being careful and discerning between something that is safe and unsafe. Uh, it would be nice if they would actually do placebo, actual just saline placebo trials with vaccinations, but they usually don't. What they do is they, instead of a placebo, they have the preservatives like mercury and aluminum and different things in the placebo, but it's in the, makes it not really a placebo. Um, so if you compare the two, the real vaccination with preservatives with uh, water and preservatives, that's not really a uh, placebo. Placebo would be just saline. So they apparently they don't do it that way. They don't do real placebo. So that to me is it should change. Um, that's just my opinion. And I'm just a private citizen uh, in Seattle, an artist and a model, but uh, there's other medical people that would back me up on this. Just, just letting you know, because I feel a little defensive, like people just think I'm a hippy dippy you know, because I am spaced out and I am improvisational and creative, but I do listen to actual scientific people who have credentials. Um, so Mike Mutzel, who has a BS, a BS in biology and MS in clinical nutrition, and he's a graduate of the Institute of, for Functional Medicine, Dr. Mark Hyman, Dr. David Perlmutter, Dr. William Davis, Stephen Finney, MD, PhD. Uh, I also admire White Oak Pastures, which is a farm, um, a, hundred, a sixth generation, 152-year-old family farm in Bluffton, Georgia, 
and they take pride in farming practices that focus on regenerative land management, humane and animal husbandry, and revitalizing our rural community. They actually replenish the soil. Um, organic farms use synthetic fertilizer and the, the soil is not there. There's no pesticides in organic farms, but the soil is not necessarily thriving. And at White Oak Pastures, they regenerate the soil and they have very, very healthy soil with really great microorganisms in the soil. And so that I really admire that for both plant and animal agriculture. It, a regenerative agriculture is a step above and beyond organic farming. It, it's even better. It actually helps the environment. They have uh, cows and sheep and goats and different animals in the same pasture with each other in a certain balanced way. And the parasites on the sheep and the cows uh, balance each other out. So it's amazing symbiotic relationship. So they learn from the wisdom of nature and the ecosystem. Last night I watched a show uh, on the connections of dust and dust in the Sahara Desert that blows to the Amazon forest and actually helps the soil, which is a natural occurrence, which is an amazing thing that the ecosystem is doing. Also, dust from the Sahara Desert blows over the Atlantic Ocean and slows down hurricanes and tornadoes or whatever the big storms are called, which is another amazing ecosystem thing that the earth does, which is um, miraculous. So we can learn from the wisdom of nature. Um, Dr. Karen Becker is a vet for animals. She's a DVM, CVH, CVA, and a CCRT. I don't know what all of those stand for, but I'm just telling you this to let you know that she is a highly trained professional who is respected and trusted and admired. And so, and I, I learned a lot from her about how to feed my cat a raw meat diet in a healthy way that is species appropriate and nutritionally balanced for all life stages of my cat uh, to let you know that I take it seriously. This is the kind of science I believe in, the kind of science that actually is in harmony with nature and promotes health and not just profits for corporations. Nothing wrong with corporations earning a profit, but if they put profit above actual health, you might have a conflict of interest. That's my only point there. Um, also, uh, Timothy David Noakes is a South African scientist and an, um, I don't know how to say this, emer emeritus professor, emeritus, M-E-M-E-R-I-T-U-S. Emeritus Professor in the Division of Exercise Science and Sports Medicine at the University of Cape Town, that's in South Africa. He actually was sued and they tried to take his medical license away from him and he won. You can look that up if you want. I'm proud of him. He's a trailblazer in nutrition. Um, he advocates for a low carbohydrate. He used to be uh, into carbs and then he changed his mind because of his own health issues and learning about how to change his health for the better, learning how to help many, many, many patients with their health um, by eating less carbs and more protein and healthy fats and fasting, intermittent fasting, which is 16 hours a day resting from eating and then eight hours a day eating. Paul Mason, MD, is a sport and exercise medicine physician specialist. So these are just some of the few people that I follow online that have many. I, I don't read well. I'm a bit dyslexic. So I listen to a lot of videos and podcasts on nutrition talks. So I was just sharing that these are some of the medical and scientific things that I'm interested in. I'm interested in getting enough vitamin D out in the natural sunlight for me and my cat, getting exercise every day in the sun, um, eating uh, real food, eating meats, fruits, vegetables, eat some nuts, eat some seeds, don't really eat a lot of um, processed sugar or seed oils or refined carbohydrates. You know, eat occasional rice and beans and things like that, but don't. I don't eat wheat. I had a thyroid condition that got better. After six months of not eating any wheat, it might be a coincidence, but my thyroid medication was no longer needed after I quit wheat after six weeks. Just letting you know that. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to share 
Uh, this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring in Seattle, and I think I will cut the video short. Uh, my website is shannonkringen.com. You can support me on Patreon. I will link that. Uh, I also sell face masks and neck gaiters with my art printed on them, just so you know. Um, I wear them when I'm required to, but when I'm uh, by myself, I do not wear a face covering because I like to breathe uh, oxygen for my health. And when I'm out walking in nature, I have a naked face. And I have a face covering with me in case I'm required to wear it, but I don't wear it unless I'm required to because I like to breathe fresh air, and I'm not here to argue with anybody about that. Um, I, my emphasis and focus is on health um, and mental health, physical health, financial health, emotional health, spiritual health. So good luck to everyone. I hope we can keep our free speech. I hope we can. Um, I'm a fan of democracy and free speech. And I don't mean hate speech and violent speech. I mean respectful, diplomatic speech that is open and honest and um, questioning authority. I don't believe in just following and obeying every single authority figure. Um, I think that can be dangerous. That could lead to totalitarianism and fascism and stuff like that. So let's be careful with that. But um, I believe in being diplomatic and respectful. So hopefully everything I said is okay. See you next time. Have a good day.